What's up, Alex? How's everything going? How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. This is Scaling Secrets, everybody, and I have some questions for you. Obviously, Alex, you have uh, extensive experience in business, 35 years. You built a company of 10,000 plus employees, $250 million in annual revenue. I mean, it's crazy what you've done. Uh, you obviously have a lot of experience when it comes to management and scaling and operations. I would just like to ask you some questions um, upon your experience and upon business as a whole. Great. All right? Yes, I'm ready. Perfect. So first topic for today, we're talking about how to scale your business quickly. Um, you know, obviously scaling comes with many challenges, and I do have some questions in regards to quickly scaling, because it's, it's different than scaling as a whole. The first question I want to ask you is, how do you, how do you balance growth and quality? What I mean by that is, you know, while scaling your business, how do you ensure that the quality of your products or services don't take a hit? Um, I use, uh, always use controller, I call controllers. It's a quality control uh, people in the small business, it's one person. Then business is growing, it, uh, it, it's a separate department, mm -hmm. head and then few controllers. And uh, the, few, uh, the, the goal of the controller is to, to control the qu quality. So, so you basically uh, write down the process, how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And controller always checks the quality and, and scores mm -hmm. uh, from, uh, from one to five. Five is excellent. Four is good, three is uh, bad, uh, and two is uh, terrible. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's a subjective uh, system, okay. but uh, it works really good. Let's let's assume you have a team of salespeople. Yeah. So so each each call has to be a certain quality. So you train the controller. What's five? What's four? What's three? What's excellent? What's good? And then control, just listen to the conversation and scores. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's how you keep the quality. Because when, uh, when team knows that you're going to check them, you're going to check, yeah. you're going to control, then they work on a certain level. Plus, you can uh, pay them based on their scores. Okay. Interesting. So Interesting. that's how you create the systems which allow you to scale. Mm -hmm. In order to scale... You have to create a system of management which will make people do what they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because uh, let's, let, let, let's take an example, uh, uh, McDonald's an, uh, as an example. McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, you uh, do your uh, potatoes at home differently than they do it. <laughs> yeah. So if... Uh, the CEO of McDonald's would, would, would write an email to all the stores and say, you can, from tomorrow, you can do the way you want yeah. uh, potatoes, fried potatoes. Uh, everybody would do, first of all, each McDonald's would do it separate, differently, and it would not be as good as uh, in, the, in, the, in the system. Yeah. So the, any system uh, makes people do what they don't want to do mm -hmm. without you. That's a definition of system. Mm -hmm. In order to scale the business, you have to create system which makes, forces people to do what they don't want to do, what, mm -hmm. what you want them to do without you. Yeah, interesting, interesting. And, 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 and it's, it's a bunch of systems. You create those systems and you step away. You, you walk away. Mm -hmm. And then the system works uh, and make people do what they don't want to do mm -hmm. without you. And you, then you create another system, another system, mm -hmm. and another system. You have to create the system in sales. You have to create the system in marketing, in finance. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can freely talk and your business is running without yeah. you. Because uh, it, it, it uh, works not spontaneously it works on systems yeah so the very important um understanding that uh you you don't you don't have to manage the business you have to create systems and system manages the business mm -hmm. 
you create the system, system manages the business, not directly. Mm -hmm. the, the big mistake small businesses make, they, me, managing the business. Yeah. No, it's you, system, and then the management yeah. of the business. You said, it, you said it correctly. Most small business owners, they can't get their hands off operations, right? And, and most entrepreneurs, most business owners, they have a good creative thinking. They can come up with ideas. How do we scale? Where to open up the next location? What we're going to sell in this next location? But these dreams, they never come to a reality because they can't step away from what they have currently running. What would you recommend to that small business owner, aside from creating systems, how can those systems be properly created and um, what team members would you need? Um, very important um, to understand the psychology behind uh, people in business. Mm -hmm. There are two different types of people you need uh, in order to build a successful business. You need, first of all, entrepreneur, yeah. entrepreneurial energy. Uh, and you need management. Mm -hmm. It's a two separate energies, like yin and yang, yeah. like male and female. Yeah. So entrepreneurial energy is very creative. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, management energy is totally different. It's a, it's a, it's a system-oriented. So you need operational type of people, totally different, um, totally different people than you. If you are an entrepreneur, 99%, if you're a successful entrepreneur, you, you're very creative, you're a uh, risk taker, yeah. and uh, you're bored to do uh, things, the same thing again and again and again. Right. Every day, 9 o'clock, is, is a certain meeting. So every entrepreneur is a um, bad manager. Yeah. In order, in order to build a good, uh, successful, big business, it's like a family. Yeah. You have to marry those two energies, entrepreneurial energy and management energy together. Yeah. Um, also, I call entrepreneurial energy is commercial. Commercial and operational. Commercial, uh, commercial decisions. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, entrepreneurial energy. Every mm -hmm. major and small decision, what to do is entrepreneurship and commercial part. Yeah. And to do it correctly, mm -hmm. consistently, with a good quality, it's operation, it's management. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's biggest problem that entrepreneurs uh, don't understand. They try to be like uh, by, by themselves. If they, if they take partner, they take another <laughs> entrepreneur. Yeah. That's a big mistake. You have to, if if you take somebody as a partner, you have to find somebody totally different than you, mm -hmm. who likes being in the office. You like running around, meeting people, uh, to do a business development. That's actually the best role of entrepreneur mm -hmm. is to be a business developer in his own his or her business. But um, management type of uh, personality is not so good in creativity, is not so good in decision making, not yeah. so good in sales, but but very good in sitting in the office and doing the same things all over again and creating and creating those systems which are uh, I was talking about earlier. Yeah. yeah. So a typical entrepreneur, I would consider myself an entrepreneur because now that you've mentioned that, I'm that type of person that likes to run around, meet new people and come up come up with business development ideas, as you've mentioned. Um, and I mean, scaling often comes with challenges, right? That would be my next question. It's, it, it often comes with challenges. And my question would be, what are the common obstacles and how can you overcome them? But now that you mentioned to me that most entrepreneurs, they struggle with the operations aspect, my following up question would be, how do you really find those people who are going to be, or this partner of yours that you've mentioned, who is going to be sitting in the office and, and taking care of the operations. Because with me, I, I feel as if I'm very, very good at coming up with ideas and, and, as you've mentioned, commercial thinking, creative thinking. What to sell, how to sell it, who to sell it to, all that good stuff. 
how do I have someone on the team? I hate operations. I hate you know doing all this stuff. How do I how do I find a partner who who can help me out with this? First of all, most of the entrepreneurs like you, yeah, and whoever is watching right now, most likely it's the same situation. Is uh, to, to ver very difficult to do just to be in the office mm -hmm. and to do the same things, which is uh, crucial for success in business because um, uh, commercial decisions and entrepreneurship it's only five percent decisions. Mm -hmm. Ninety-five percent is execution, and execution management operation is doing the same thing every day with the with the uh, uh, consistent high quality. So number one, in order to find this person, you have to understand who are you looking for. That's why what I'm saying right now is very important to understand first. Because if you cannot find something that you don't know what you're looking for. Yeah. First, you have to know what exactly what you're looking for. And then you, you start meeting people and, um, and you have a chance to, to find this. Mm -hmm. but, uh usually uh, you like more people who are like you <laughs> yeah that's true and this type of person can be a little bit annoying and irritating for you and can be can look and sound uh, a little bit slow to you yeah because entrepreneur is like a sprinter it's a, it's a running on the short distances uh, and the manager is more like marath marathon type yeah, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of a guy so it's a slower speed but can run much uh, longer and that's what you need yeah endurance not speed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the biggest mistake because entrepreneur is always looking for somebody quick fast like him and even with employees, he's not, not even the partner. When when small uh, business owner starts hiring an employees, he is basically hiring uh, the same type of the person who is not not system oriented. Yeah. But not an entrepreneur. Yeah. There are those type of people exist, but that's a wrong hire. You have to basically. Another thing to explain, maybe the image would help you. Uh, typical entrepreneur is a bad student in, in, in school. Yeah. And typical uh, good manager is very good student. Mm -hmm. And all good employees try to hire A students. That's yeah. the best sign that he's going to be a good employee, that he, he was a, an A student in school, in college. Yeah. Entrepreneur is totally different. He likes freedom. He or she doesn't like to do what uh, somebody else told told you to do. Yeah. But uh, in operation, in uh, management, that's you have to like boring things because that's ninety five percent of things in uh, business are boring. And yeah. a certain type of people, God gave them uh, patience to do those boring things yeah starting from school and then they can do those boring things every day the other day you've mentioned to me when most people go into a partnership they find someone with similar skill sets but different values can you elaborate a little bit more about that because you also did mention right after you said that that you have to find a partner that has the same values as you but different skill sets so elaborate a little bit about what you mean. Yes, in, in, in partnership uh, and in hiring uh, employees, the most important is values. You have to have the same values, but different skills. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, you good in finance and legal, I'm good in sales and marketing. That's a good partnership if we have uh, same values. What, yeah. what, what, the, what do, do I mean by values? Uh, we see the world almost the same thing uh, all, almost uh, the same yeah i said ilan this is black oh this is black this is white yes this is white <laughs> this is yellow yes this is yellow this is good yes good this is bad so we see the same way because yeah. um that's a crucial the most important if uh, uh if you see 
many things differently, then you would not be able to work. Yeah. It's a value problem. Mm -hmm. Values, different values. That's because you have a different values. You you look at the same thing and you see something different. Mm -hmm. Then you will not disagree, will not agree, and business is uh, fragile and a lot of relationship, a lot of different situations, and uh, will be many many different situations. And you have to you have to be you have to see the world almost the same in order to find the. Yeah, a common uh, solution. Uh, so that's the most important. But skills should be different. Like mm -hmm. one entrepreneurial, one management mm -hmm. guy, one sales, one finance, one legal, one marketing. So it has to be like a sports team. Everybody is uh, with the same goals and same values, but but playing in the different roles. Very interesting. Very interesting.